All right, I'm going to go through a bit of a spiel because we're about seven minutes to go here. Um, so anyone who is watching who is an attendee, um, if you would like to participate in public comment, uh, you need to raise your hand. That doesn't mean literally hold your hand up to the screen. That means use the raise hand feature. Now that we are in a webinar, it is a single click. At the bottom of your screen, in the middle of the screen, should be an icon that says raise hand, and it's going to look like a raised hand. And that's all you have to do to raise your hand. Um, for the panelists tonight, um, we, are, we are going to still ask that you try to use that feature where possible. And because you can now mute both your video and your audio at your own discretion, we encourage the muting of video and audio uh, unless, it is, unless it is necessary for you to participate. Um, people who are presenting tonight, um, you'll be promoted no, the panelist. Oh, that's Twitter. People who are presenting tonight, um, for example, the uh, registrar's office, the tax assessor, the tax collector, um, you will be promoted to panelist when it is your time to present. Um, you will, as a panelist, have the ability to share screen and to mute and unmute yourself, um, both in audio and in video. So you can participate in that manner as you like. For I participants who are about. simply attendees, um, th that would be little, the greater public here. If you'd like to participate in public comment, do, do raise your hand. Simple. And I'll get you on a list and um, I'll put you on that list hand. on a first come first serve basis. And then at seven o'clock, we will have a hard close. Anyone who's on the list at seven o'clock, I'll call on when Pete opens the floor for public comment. You'll have five minutes to, to address the Board of Finance and the Town Council. Excuse me, Mike. I don't you. Go ahead. Are you live? Okay. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt you. However, Walter did, he is dialing the ID number, which is what the link got me in. So can you look at something or figure out a way for him to get in? And then can you say you can't find your hand? Oh. So Mike, I see Walter, but I do not hear him. Walter O'Connor? Yes. Walter oh, Walter's not speaking. No, we're talking yeah, about Walter. We're talking Walter about Walter Bear. Bear. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Walter so, Walter calls in. Right. Um, Zoom not signed in. All right. So we're, I, I want to do a, a bit of a roll call here if we can. Um, if, Before if, you do that, Mike, can I, treat, I would like to see our, well, it's only five minutes of, I'd like to make this, get our councilman Bayer in here. Um, yeah. I've never oh, had, I'm going to have him. Board of Finance. Whoops. I'm going to call gonna Larry. Try I'm another, calling, uh, excuse I'm gonna call Larry. me. I'm going to have Walter call a different number, Pete. The, one of the other toll-free numbers. You don't have anything different than what I see, do you? No. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead, Mike. I was going to say also, I'm going to try to call Larry Tripp and try to walk you through this real quick. Thanks, Trevor. Larry is, he should be in and unmuted in terms of audio at least. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to try to help. All right, so since we don't really have time to do a proper roll call, um, when your turn is to present, when it comes your turn to present, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. There's Larry. Um, there we go. And when your hand is raised, I'll promote you to a panelist. Uh, the other, uh, if you are somebody like Greg, Greg, uh, Greg Bolero, I'm assuming you're gonna uh, be presenting for personnel. The person who is uh, listed as register, I'm assuming you're presenting for the register. Um, Oh, get out of that. So Lord beyond Lord. that, I, I imagine Kevin Reynolds is going to be presenting for, well, uh, like I said, we'll, we'll do the hand, ra hand raising Larry. thing so I can promote you guys to panelists. Hey, Larry, we can hear you and we can see you. Okay. Oh, you can see me. Okay. Yep. I can't see. I can't see anybody. We can see you. Okay. And then, uh, Mike, are we also going to do it where... When they're presenting, everybody has their mics off and then they raise their hand and we call on them to participate, correct? Um, that was that was what you were trying to convey yep. to me when we talked about this. So yep. um, it's it's uh, panelists. Again, you have the ability to mute, unmute yourself if you, um, it's, it's kind of a courtesy thing to. Yep, uh, Mike. Oh, where's Walter? I'm gonna make you. Mike, I just got a text from Ray Jankowski. He's having difficulty getting, him, getting on with the link. Could you resend it to him, please? Okay, so who am I sending? Ray Jankowski. Yeah, Katie, I also tried dialing in on my phone and it, it doesn't take it. Okay. Created the, the uh, link, Pete. Did you? 
or Pat or somebody? I didn't create it. I almost right. think this link was for yesterday's meeting. Yesterday's but they're all, but they no, it's an ongoing again. meeting. It doesn't matter. It's an ongoing matter. meeting, Chris. Yeah. It just keeps going. Um, it, it certainly, you log in differently, that's for sure. How did you get on, Chris? Well, I had to, logging in here, I had to put in my uh, my email address, which I've never had to do before in a Zoom meeting. Okay. And uh, so I just tried using the phone directions on there. And well, we have a person who has dialed in in the attendees. I don't know who it is, but I see, yes. There's a phone there. I, it's not Walter Bayer, but uh, could have anything to do with okay. the fact that it's set up as a different type of meeting. I would bet, if anything, it has to do with the fact that when I started this meeting at 6:30, um, another host started. We completely restarted this meeting, so we had so in order to get back into the meeting, I had to back end into it. Um, so I I started this I don't meeting understand. at 6:30. Understand? You completely restarted the meeting. So Katie, when you when you joined in, did you did you just join the meeting or did you press yes. start meeting? No, I just joined the meeting. Uh, Hang on, because, it's Walter. Hang on. Yep. Stephanie Barksdale. Stephanie, I'm going to make you a panelist too. You can mute and unmute yourself, both in terms of audio and video now. Mike, do you see the um, the chat? Let's see. Where is chat? Q and A. Is Captain Will Coxon. Chief Schroeder will be presenting for the police department. So let's see, where's Captain Will Coxon? He's uh, in the attendees yep. under A, a. Will Coxon. Yep. So uh, A. Will Coxon, I've sent a, uh, sent a request for you to unmute. So then, Walter Clancy. I, I just in. want to make sure that we have this correct. Yes, you do. Okay, so are so you are not going to present be presenting. Chief Sirto is instead. Correct. I'm uh, assisting. I logged on for him. Oh, then, okay. So right now, you your account is what uh, Chief Sirto is using. Correct. Okay. So I'm just going to rename you so I can make this clearer for me. And I see, and I see Registrar has their name or their hand raised. Can you uh, see us? Yes. No. Okay. Yes, I we can. can I can, can see you. you. Okay. All right. Then, then we're going to mute. Bye. You could see the registrar. Yes, I can see him. Need a name, registrar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but there was no video. I All right. So Walter will not be able to join. We will fix this tomorrow. If we need to send out a new uh, link, then that's what we need to do. Because uh, we need to have our council people be able to attend. Is everyone that's under the attendees uh, supposed to be there? I see James Furlow, Greg Bolero, Brian Lastra, Nancy McGavick, Olga. Yep. So, okay. uh, Mike, can you do me a quick favor? There is a phone number here. Yep. Eight, allowed zero, to talk. Eight zero. Can we allow them to talk to see how yep. they were able to get on? Yeah, that's the person I said. I don't. I don't know who it is. Do you? So eight six zero six eight zero six three three eight. If you could please press star nine, star to, unmute nine to unmute yourself. There you go. There you go. I'm not part of the meeting. So from a technical so, standpoint, technical how did you get into the meeting? I clicked on the link from uh, yesterday's uh, link. Join Zoom meeting. Yep. Okay. So we have you logged on as. Did you? Did you type in a phone number to get in or was it done through clicking the link? It was there. Um, I hadn't noticed that before. It was there through the click of the link. Yeah. On my Zoom app. Yeah, he's on not your dialed phone. He's, okay. Zoom he's not dialed in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So I've got um, Katie, Chris, Dave, uh, Tom. And then Trevor, Amy, Larry, Walter, uh, O'Connor, Diane, and Barbara Wolf. Am I missing anybody? Uh, no, Mary Jane Tom. tonight. No, Mary Jane's not coming tonight. Okay. Yeah, Mike Nahum will not be with us, and Michael uh, Gold also. How about Doug or? Um, I didn't get a response from him. And, and Walter Bear is not able to get on tonight. Is that what you're saying? Correct. He will not be. He cannot join us. Mm. Yeah, same thing, Stephanie, with Ray Jankowski. He uh, is having difficulty getting on. Okay. Uh, 
resent the links to him a couple of times. I think he was trying by phone. So are you seating anybody in anybody's place? Or what's the... No, he's uh, the only alternate that's trying to get on right now. So if he gets on, yes, we'll seat him. And if Joe DiGorio gets on, we'll seat Joe. And just for the edification of our town council board of finance members, um, we can still proceed with the department head meetings because we are not taking any votes mm -hmm. or action. <clears throat> right. Stephanie? Yes. Stephanie, I request that from here going forward, anybody who gets up for public comment, please make sure you're asking their home address. Um, I hear many uh, comments for the, from, for the last few months on people using their business address or a family address. I think it's important that they, that they uh, give us their home address if they're going to address us. Thank okay. you. Thank you. So Pete, um, your comment just now, is that in the minutes that um, you can still take, uh, you can still go on without? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So Mike, uh, do we have anybody that wants to address the, the council or board of finance uh, before we start anything? Do you see any names? I do not see any hands raised. So I'd like to do is start with the pledge. Um, Trevor, could you lead us in the pledge, please? The United States of America. Of America. And to the republic, the republic for which it stands, which it stands one, nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. We have a moment of silence for the men and women in the armed forces and our first responders. Thank you. I would like to now call for the town council, uh, our meeting back to order, and Walter. I call for the meeting back to order of the Board of Finance. Okay, so Mike. Can you start us off with our first uh, presenter, which will be our registrar? Okay, registrar, I'm promoting you to panelists. So you now have the ability to share screen, mute yourself, unmute yourself in both audio and video. I also have all presentations. So anyone who needs me to do the share screen, I can do that as well. And for the council and for the Board of Finance, page 116. Can you uh, see us? Can you see us now or? No, but we can hear you. Okay, that's that's good. Uh, well, there's really, the only changes we have, of course, if you, if you look is the election personnel. And the reason for that is, uh, of course, District 8, which oh. we created, which we created that at the right time because of the absentee ballot stuff. Excuse me, did you want to share the screen to show us something? No. No. Okay. Who, Thank you. Uh, uh, who no, is, we're more tech. Who is speaking on behalf of the registrar, please? Marcel Grenier. Thank you. And John, and there's Marcel Grenier, which is me. Okay. And who's and it's, John, and it's John Geyser is also here. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Marcel. Uh, like I said, the, the only thing really we've changed is the election personnel. As you can see, and the reason for that is because of the extra district for uh, FCT ballot stuff. We were doing that even without the pandemic because of the amount of uh, FCT ballot stuff that we we're getting. Uh, actually, we wound up with, uh, I think it was just over 5,000 FCT ballots this time, which usually for presidential, we wind up around 2,500 anyway. So, you know. Uh, is it, does anybody have any questions about anything or? Chris? Yeah, so, um, and, and I'm sure you can clarify this. So in, in, in 19 for, and I'm looking at line for election person, uh, there was a big drop from, from 19 to 20. Uh, and then uh, up a big jump back up in 21 and then a smaller jump in 22. This is just due to the number of people you need to count absentee ballots primarily? Well, it's no. also, the, also the anticipated number of uh, elect, elect, election events that we're going to have. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions for John or Marcel? 
Okay. Thank you, guys. Well, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you guys. Both. Bye-bye thank now. you. Have a nice evening, everyone. Good night. You too. Thank you. Uh, next, we're going to be moving on to the uh, uh, tax assessor. That'll be okay. Brian Lastra. Okay, thank you. Brian, you are a panelist. Again, I have your presentation if you would prefer I share it or you can share screen yourself. What page are we looking at? Uh, uh, starting with eight and then moving on to uh, 90 and 252, depending on where he wants to start. That's okay, Brian. Brian. And Mike, is there a PowerPoint that Brian wants to present? Uh, I have a PowerPoint for him. Uh, Brian, would you prefer I, sh I share or would you sh prefer to share yourself? Um, you can, uh, uh, I can try doing it. Uh, so if I just hit the share screen and then I click on the PowerPoint, it'll come up? Yes. Okay. Let's see. We got nice music. Huh. <laughs> I don't know that's how I nice. did that. <laughs> that's a nice touch, Brian. Yeah, yeah that's, that's you. you're really stepping up your game there, man. Yeah. <laughs> you turn the budget that way. Let's review the proposals from last meeting. Not sure how I did that. Oh. Sorry about that. No problem. No problem. Brian, would you like me to share it? Um, let's see. Yeah, that would probably be a good idea. I'm not. All right, getting, I, I'm I not, got it for you. I'm not getting too far here. You got it, Mike. Okay. Okay. So um, we'll start off with uh, revenues. Um, assuming the town hall opens uh, later this year, we could generate a small amount of revenue that comes across our counter in the form of coffee fees for assessment documents. Uh, the $487 uh, represents a decrease from the prior year's estimate of 1200 because currently the office is not open generally to the public. Um, real estate professionals and others uh, have accessed our assessment related information via the internet and um, websites that the town supports. So um, once we reopen uh, on a daily basis, we should see some of our customers return and they would uh, obviously be paying for uh, copies and documents that they, that they need. Um, now we'll move on to uh, page two of my presentation. And here we get into the uh, expense um, for the department, uh, which is in your, on page 90 of your uh, budget. And um, it covers things like personnel, assessor overtime, uh, property tax audits, um, uh, assessor training and uh, professional development, material and supplies, and computer software. So uh, under personnel, uh, we run the office with a staff of three, myself, uh, Mary Zulo, and Jill Lucas. And uh, this basically is covering our salaries. Uh, there's also a line item for longevity. Mary's been with the town and for quite a long time and qualifies for a longevity payment. And then uh, Jill is working towards her certification as a Connecticut Municipal Assessor. Um, and if she attains that, she'll be able to take the exam this year uh, and the final class that she needs. So if she attains that, uh, there's under the union contract, there's a uh, salary adjustment if she becomes certified. Um, we have budget for uh, overtime. Uh, the staff works, works really hard and we haven't had any need for overtime for the last couple of years, but it is, it is there in case we do have uh, uh, a bottleneck or a situation where uh, we need to get work done in a, in a timely fashion. Um, but like I said, we haven't uh, spent that money over the last couple of years. Now we'll move on to uh, page three. And here we're, I discuss uh, pro personal property tax audits. Uh, each year uh, we budget about $10,000 uh, to audit uh, 20 businesses, which we choose at random here within the town. 
um, audits are completed in accordance with Connecticut general statute, which provides uh, the town with the ability to review three prior years of personal property uh, declaration filings. Uh, the audits generate tax revenue. We recently completed audits for the 2019, 2018, and 2017 grand list years, and we generated approximately $40,000 in additional uh, taxes, revenues, and fees. Uh, the audits are also uh, good from uh, the standpoint that uh, business owners and property tax professionals become aware of our audits and compliance uh, with filing personal property declarations each year improves. So we'll move on to page four. Here we budget $3,000 for uh, training and development. Um, Mary and I are both certified Connecticut municipal assessors. So we're required to take continuing education uh, uh, on a yearly basis to stay certified. Plus the continuing ed keeps us, uh, helps us stay abreast of the latest developments in uh, property tax administration and, and valuation. And we uh, also pay for membership dues in professional organizations. And uh, this, also, this money also allows us to take uh, a Connecticut Association of Assessing Officers approved workshops and seminars. Um, materials and supplies. We budget about $8,000 for uh, the printing of our grand list books, the printing and mailing of assessment increase notices, which includes postage, and also the printing of our personal property declarations and, and, uh, and forms <clears throat> that we also mail out to uh, taxpayers each year. Uh, we also use that money for the DM, Department of Motor Vehicles uh, portal access. This allows us to access uh, Connecticut DMV records. Uh, this helps us with our customers who uh, may be looking for an adjustment to a, a automobile uh, bill that they've, uh, um, they've maybe have disposed of a car during the grand list year and, and need to have that uh, assessment and tax bill adjusted. Uh, so that saves the customer uh, a lot of running around when we can look up uh, information concerning uh, the vehicles that they own. It also pays for uh, a motor vehicle pricing subscription with the National Automotive Dealers Association. Uh, we're required by state law when we value motor vehicles to use the NADA clean retail value. So. Um, all Connecticut towns um, have a relationship with the NADA and uh, we pay each year uh, to uh, have the uh, values for the motor vehicles that are on our grand list updated uh, as of October 1st. Um, and then finally, with respect to supplies, we have obviously a need for office supplies, uh, paper, uh, pens and that sort of thing. So um, th that's the final element of, of our materials. Then finally, uh, we move on to computer software. You'll notice that uh, uh, there's an increase here of about $12,000 uh, versus last year. Uh, this money pays for um, our database, cloud hosting, web hosting, and licensing and maintenance with Vision Government Solutions. That's our real property, uh, computer assisted software that we use. A lot of uh, uh, taxpayers and our customers will you go on the, on the internet site to access information concerning uh, their property. Well, that we also have a version of that that's uh, here uh, in the office that we use to maintain uh, our real property da database. And then the, the increase of this year is um, in the past, uh, our assessment administrative system, which we use for uh, uh, primarily billing uh, and tracking property exemptions and, and using it to apply property tax credits to elderly and so on. Uh, in the past, that uh, expenditure had been absorbed by the 
information and te technology department. And so, um, and part of that reason was we switched to uh, uh, a new administrative system about five years ago. And when that occurred, uh, the company had to convert all our data and we paid for that conversion over a five year period. So that we've now, uh, we're now beyond that five year period and the information technology uh, director felt that it would probably be a good idea if we absorb this cost because now that conversion cost is, has disappeared and, um, and we can easily see what I pay for that software and what the tax collector pays uh, for that, for her uh, version of the software. So that's why um, <clears throat> that explains the increase. And obviously there's a corresponding decrease uh, for the IT department. Now, now we'll move on to page five. And uh, here uh, on page 97, uh, there's, uh, this wasn't really part of the, my presentation per se tonight, but I do have to account for tax refunds uh, that you approve every month. And that happens to be under my purview. So I estimate uh, that this year we'll probably spend about $70,000 on tax refunds due to overpayments. And they're primarily motor, ve motor vehicle related and uh, uh, to leased, leased vehicles. So leasing companies, when the bills come out in July, they pay the bills immediately and then worry about uh, any, any overpayments later on. So most of the refunds for motor vehicle uh, do go to leasing companies. And then in September, we have a board of assessment appeal session where all they do in that month is hear motor vehicle assessment appeal. So any changes that they make will have to uh, refund uh, any uh, overage uh, based on what the uh, taxpayer paid in July. If there's assessment reduced in September, then there would be be a refund. Um, last night, you probably talked about the town's legal budget, and I was would have this line item uh, would have been part of that. So we are budgeting twenty thousand dollars for any uh, litigation s services that are needed uh, for tax appeals that are uh, pursued through the superior court. So we obviously, uh, if any tax appeals are filed through the courts, we obviously need. Uh, the services of an attorney to help us uh, with that. And then um, finally, on page 252, I have a couple of capital items. First one uh, concerns the revaluation. As you know, we just completed a revaluation uh, for the 2020 grand list, but we also have to start saving for the next one. So we uh, perform revaluations every five years. So we're starting to set aside money uh, to pay for the next revaluation in 2025. And then also under Assessor's Capitals, my GIS mapping, uh, we spend about $15,600 a year uh, to a company called AppGeo. They do all of our tax map updates based upon uh, parcel subdivisions that are approved uh, through planning and zoning, parcel merges, any uh, lot line revisions, um, they also uh, do changes to our maps to reflect easement areas and any resolution of boundary line issues or other problems we may find uh, with the map. So that pretty much covers um, the assessor's budget. Are there any questions? Okay, before we get to the questions, Mike, uh, could you do me a favor? Uh, this is to Mike Sinello. Yep. Could you put in the chat box the link to the meeting? so that anyone uh, on council that's getting requests to enter can copy mm -hmm. and paste the link and send it out so Thank that you. others can, can join. Thank and I, I know Trevor, you raised your hand first, so Trevor. Uh, just a quick question in um, with regards to the business personal property um, declarations, is there any opportunity to streamline that similar to like the e-bid process or anything like that instead of sending out the individual declarations to some of the businesses sure. as well? Uh, yeah, there is a chance to do that. The, our vendor, Quality Data Services, uh, they supply the, the uh, software for us to maintain the personal property assessments. Um, 
they have an online uh, version of, of their uh, program so that uh, certain businesses can um, report uh, their, their personal property assets without actually filling out a paper form. Right. So we're, we're, last year, we, we thought we were going to try to implement that. But with COVID, we couldn't get the training that we needed. But um, assuming that um, uh, COVID is under control, uh, we should be able to, we may be able to get training this summer and they, we could make that an option uh, for uh, some of our businesses. It, we might not want to try to, to do the entire uh, business, all the businesses in the first year so that we could, but we could maybe, uh, you know, select a couple hundred, for example, and, and avoid mailing declarations to them and uh, 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 doing it on a, in an online format. Great, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. And Diane, you have to unmute yourself, Diane. Wanted to raise my hand the proper way, but I can't when the, when the thing is being shared. So I, thank you, Trevor, that was one of my questions. The second one was with, when, you, when you are assessing a vehicle, uh, for the grand list, yes. Is that is that value determined by the state? You know, that's a common uh, uh, a belief. So what happens is, as I mentioned, we have a relationship with the NADA. Every uh, every year in um, in December, DMV sends us a file of every registered vehicle uh, in the town of New Milford. Before it comes to us, DMV and the NADA um, will attempt to price all those vehicles. And generally speaking, we get we have about uh, uh, 26,000, 27,000 vehicles on our grand list. Um, all the passenger cars uh, will get priced. Um, all the antique cars that have historical plates and a $500 assessment, they will get priced. So they get, the file is priced, uh, I'd say about 85% of the vehicles are priced before they come to us. So yes, in a sense, they're, they're priced by the state, but it's a, like I say, it's a relationship with the NADA and the DMV. Uh, the only, the vehicles that aren't priced uh, tend to be uh, construction uh, vehicles, trucks, heavy duty trucks, uh, because they are uh, what we call incomplete. They're, so if you have a, uh, a box truck, for example, uh, it's categorized as an incomplete. So basically what gets sold is a cabin chassis. And then you could have a box, a flatbed, a dump body. It could have anything on it. So those tend to come to us unpriced and I price those uh, manually. But uh, generally, most of the vehicles, especially the passenger cars, uh, come through price from, from when, they, when they come here. So I just want to finish on that. So if you, I happen to have a very old um, yeah. personal pickup truck that sure. is high mileage. And that's mm -hmm. you know, easy to take. Uh, Can't hear the, you. The, the chassis is in good shape and I've taken care of it, but... If I, if I feel that it's not worth as much as I'm being assessed for, is there an uh, option to yeah. question it? Yes. Yeah, so the option is, uh, as I mentioned in September, the Board of Assessment Appeals, uh, they, have, they have a couple days. That's all they do. That's all they're allowed to do is motor vehicles. So when you get the bill in July, that's usually a trigger for a lot of people. They'll, sick, they'll look at the assessment, think it's too high. They'll call us. We'll tell them, fill out the, this application, send it back to us online through the mail, whatever. And then we'll, we'll, uh, hey, if Mike Snello, they'll, the board of, a, you, you'll be scheduled for a, a board how, how of assessment of hearing in September. And then we can even look up in our guides. We have paper copies of the guides. We have an online version. We can look up based on the age of the car, what's considered a reasonable mileage. So if it's a 10 year old car, and then the board, what they tend to do is they look at your mileage, they look at what the NADA is thinking the mileage should be, and then the NADA has charts if it's excessive mileage, 
how much the value should be reduced. They'll, they pretty much use that chart. Okay, that's great information. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome. Chris? Um, hey, Brian, so on the computer software line, yeah. um, you mentioned there was one charge that was in IT that's come over to you now. Yes. Roughly how much of the total is that? 11,000 even. Okay. Uh, that's the QDS software maintenance. And, and is that the main reason for the bump up uh, yeah. from yeah. last year? Okay. Yeah, the other the other line items, uh, the visions, uh, they charged me a little more for everything. Um, okay. But most of it came from QDS. But I know it's like two years ago, there was nothing uh, even on that line at all. So right. these are all recent charges? Yes, exactly. We started okay. the process uh, last year to move software that I'm primarily the only user of, you know, the assessors right. department. Yeah, into okay. my budget. Yep. And, and then great. another, just a, a budget... Uh, and this is probably my ignorance and understanding what the assessor GIS mapping really is, but mm -hmm. it, it, if that's an annual and it's a service, should that, does that really belong in capital? Should it, should it be an operating expense? Yeah. You know, it's always, it's been in capital before I started here. Um, but that's, a, that's something maybe I could talk to Greg Ossipow yeah. about. Yeah. It is, it is more of a, of a service. I, in the yep. initial, I suppose in the when it was initially created, it was probably quite an expense, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it was probably viewed as capital. Right, but right. Now okay. we're into maintenance. You're right. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Tom, just a comment on the GIS. It's probably one of the most um, user friendly and uh, useful um, pieces of software I, I've experienced here in town. Yeah, uh, it really is fantastically valuable, along with the vision appraisal. Um, applications. Uh, it gives, um, it unfortunately, reduces some revenues coming into your office for those <laughs> maps that the realtors used to need on every uh, transaction. But um, right. two, two fantastic pieces that if people have not used them, um, I encourage them to go on the town site and try those uh, two access points. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Any other questions for Brian? Thank you for the report. Okay, you, you're yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Okay. Next is up for presenting is the tax collector, Nancy. She's all right. Uh, Just give me one second. You move her over. Okay. There we go. She's a panelist now. Nancy? Nancy's muted. There we go. There we go. If someone could share my presentation, I'd appreciate it. Mike? Sure. Sure. One second. And I'm just going to tab over. So the majority of the increase in the tax collector's budget is due to the software transfer from the IT department of $10,000 um, that's listed on the second page. Um, the other increases is just to salary. Um, our seasonal help, I'm increasing or requesting an increase of $250. Um, Onto the second page, um, the only other increase is to the training line. I'm requesting another $100. Um, there is a new recertification requirement for, ta ooh, for yeah. tax collectors. Um, and other than that, everything else had remained the same. I'm not sure why that looks that way. <clears throat> Looks like two slides overlap there, Nancy. I'm not controlling it. <laughs> oh, Mike, can you uh, check that? Mike Sanello? Yeah, it looks like when uh, this, this slide was built, it was, um, yeah. All right, give me one second. I'll see if I can do this. 
Let me back up. Hey, Pete, while Mike is working on that, I know you're in the chat and uh, somebody is saying the public cannot access the- um... I'm answering them right now. Okay. And I put them on uh, our social site as well. And Mike, are you able to get the presentation up? Yeah, just give me one second. I'll just do this. Okay. So that is the second slide. There you go. Yes. Uh, do you need me to actually start the slideshow or is that good enough for now? I think that's good. I went over everything. I don't know if there's any right. questions. Does anybody have any questions for Nancy on tax collector? No. Nope. Thank you, Nancy. Good job. Thanks, Nancy. Good job. You're welcome. Thank you. Next is the personnel, personnel budget. 104. All right, Greg, you are a panelist. Let me know if you need to share a screen. <clears throat> okay, can everybody hear me? Yep. 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 Excellent. So good evening, everybody. Mike, would you mind running the slides for the personnel department? You got it. Give me one second. Thank you. Actually, if you just want to go straight to slide two. Okay. One sec. Give me one second. And use their slide two. Okay, thank you. So for the personnel budget, um, the current salaries that you see on the page are the current salaries for this year. So there's no additional line on it, line money for any of the salaries. Uh, personnel director at 89,254 and the personnel assistant at 54,359. The 359 in the personnel assistant, 300 of that is uh, longevity. And Mike, we can go to the next slide. So for the supplies and expense accounts, um, you're going to see a significant decrease in the personnel budget for this year. A lot of that is due to the shift of the tuition reimbursement going from the personnel department to the police department. And so you'll mm -hmm. see a shift going back to them. They carry a lot of the liability on that due to the contract language. Um, so I'm, I'm reducing the tuition reimbursement request to $10,000. The rest of the town either has a $1,000 limit per fiscal year or the non-union at $3,000 based on uh, who we know that is going to school now and will be in, in the next year. Uh, $10,000 should cover the tuition reimbursement. Um, we do see a large increase in the materials and supplies. That is due to the NovaTime implementation, which is our time and attendance system which has been fully implemented, it is going extraordinarily well. Mm -hmm. um, and then just light supply increases from that perspective, we're also gonna be redoing our labor law posters. I am anticipating an increase in the minimum wage. So those posters will be um, definitely necessary. The rest of the budget, recruitment expense, drug and alcohol, the employee assistance and wellness programs, those are all staying flat for this year. Um, I am anticipating doing some additional training for the personnel department, especially with the police accountability bill, just making sure that any requirements from an employee perspective is taken care of. But overall, it's a decrease of about $20,000, $19,890.07 to be exact. And Mike, if you can just go to the next slide. 
our total budget is down by about $19,890 for a total budget of one ninety one six sixty four zero two. Do we have any questions? Yes. Hey. Um, thanks, Greg. I just would, just for, uh, so everybody understands, the line that's Employee Assistance Program, if you could explain what that is. Yeah, so the Employee Assistance Program, something that we've had for the town employees for a number of years. Anytime employees have any type of trauma or if they need uh, elder care assistance, if they have personal problems, the town has this service to provide them a resource so that when they're on the job, they're able to function and perform effectively and have resources for them when they're outside of work. Um, the EAP is a very common uh, thing in public service. Uh, mm -hmm. They do it for a lot of the different state agencies as well as you'll see it throughout the municipal governments, but a fantastic program that we're able to offer the employees. Thank you. Any other questions for Greg? Thank you, Greg. Okay, thank Thanks, you, everybody. Greg. Thanks, Thanks Greg. Greg. Thank you. Next is the fire marshal. Okay, so who are, who are we promoting for a fire marshal today? Be Kevin Reynolds. Okay. Kevin, you are our panelist. What page, Pete? 28. 28? Starts at 28. And Mike, could you put uh, Kevin's deck up, please? Yep. Enabled on mute. There we go. How are we doing? Good, we... Kevin. Good. Awesome. We can hear you. Okay, so uh, the fire marshal's but uh, office is is uh, a prize of myself, Deputy Steve Case. Uh, he's the deputy fire marshal. He is only part time due to the COVID pandemic. Donna Tallarico, we share with the building department. Um, half the salary comes out of here and half the salary comes out of the uh, building department. Um, responsibilities, you know, the investigations, plan reviews, construction inspections, existing occupancy inspections, public education, open burning. Uh, we've, we've had a, a lot of those uh, this year. I don't know if it's because everybody's home and they're trying to get caught up. Um, we deal with the hazardous materials. Uh, people want blasting permits, that's the explosives, uh, fireworks, and um, also training exercises with the uh, area fire department. Second uh, page, please. So the only increases are um, gonna be salaries, um, the contractual um, with the unions, uh, the overtime staying the same at 5,500, uh, professional development, that's all staying the same. They're all staying the same for this, this coming year. Uh, and our total expenses are 193,983 30. Anybody have any questions for Kevin? I got one more one more uh, page. Just the yeah. the revenues. If uh, there we go. So last year sixty one thousand nine nine hundred and fifty eight seventy five. This year to date we're at twenty five thousand seven thirty four. Um, this is due to the drawdown from the residential inspections, which will be starting back up come April first. The fire marshal's office has been fully vaccinated and we have every intention of working with everybody that needs to be inspected to make it a smooth transition and work with everybody if they have reservations about us still doing the inspections. We're gonna make it work with the townspeople one way or the other. Um, I see the 
this year's revenue, um, it should be a lot higher than, than the 25,000. That's the number you're seeing now, but I'm sure it'll be a lot higher by the time we are done. Chris? Really just a comment, Kevin. I think you did a great job uh, this past summer with the open fire uh, issues and communicating, um, you know, when the bans were in effect and when they weren't in effect uh, to, uh, to folks around town. So I appreciate you doing that. Thank you. Any other questions for Fire Marshal Reynolds? Good job all year. Great job, Kevin. Thank you guys, I appreciate your support. Thank you, Thank Kevin. You. Next up is the local emergency planning budget for fiscal year 2020, 21. Uh, uh, we... uh, 21, 22. Yep, sorry. Yeah. Do we have uh... Jim? Yep, sorry. Jim. That's James Frillo. Jim, you just have to unmute yourself, I believe. For some reason, it kicked me out very quickly, but I'm back. Uh, Mike, if you can bring up my, um, first of all, I'd like to go back to the emergency management one. Um, although originally it was done, emergency management was done under the fire marshal. We've separated it out this year. I think it's a little bit important to discuss what's going on with emergency management and um, you know, obviously the current situations we have in town. So if we could bring up the uh, emergency management budget, that'd be great. There we go. Um, again, the emergency management budget is a total of $15,000. Um, it includes the stipends for the emergency management director, which is myself, James Furlow, and our deputy emergency management director, which is Kevin Reynolds. Um, Obviously, we've been very busy this year uh, trying to manage a whole bunch of different things associated with Corona, as well as trying to, do, to incorporate them into our regular jobs and help the general public, as well as the town, um, go, get through this uh, pandemic. Um, we have a small stipend for general equipment, which is $1,000. Um, we can go into the next slide, please. Obviously, I can't cut and paste well. This is not part of the local emergency <laughs> planning commission. This is actually part of the uh, uh, emergency management okay. budget. Uh, but our budget is 15,000. Our current amount utilized, I believe in the first six months was 6,170. I am requesting a budget of $19,000, which is a $4,000 increase in this budget. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. All right. Uh, this budget increase is uh, we're looking to purchase materials and supplies necessary to create an emergency operations center. Um, we need a, a, a base of operations that won't interfere with other emergency activities. In the past, the EOC has been operated from the ambulance facility, the public works, water which hose company, and the town hall. There is no specific uh, location designated for emergency operations or command. Um, we're looking to try and get our own room uh, where we can have all the information and all the uh, materials available. This room would have to be in one of the buildings that has a generator uh, because usually when the EOC is open, it's during our worst time frames. Um, this was one of the items that was discussed after Hurricane Sandy back in 2012 when I was uh, the uh, fire chief of Water Witch Hose Company number two. Um, and Again, we worked on a lot of things going forward, communication towers, those were a little bit more critical. So they got through and done by the town. Uh, but I think it's time that we really look at, at establishing a permanent EOC. Um, although a lot of people think the ambulance facility, but if you take a look at our pandemic, they've actually turned their um, operations room into a facility for sleeping to sp spread things out and make sure that they could meet the requirements of um, medical response to the towns of New Milford. Uh, so this is something we need to take a closer look at so we don't have interference with that. And this way we can actually get uh, the right people in the right place to do the right job. I think that's uh, a very important. So that's why I'm making this request, request is, uh, starting to go forward with that. 
Um, I will continue also to try and find additional um, grants or anything else like that to make this a reality over the next two years or so. Right now, we're really focused on pandemic as uh, emergency management side. Kevin is dealing with all of the PPE for the town of New Milford, and thank, thankful he is there doing all of that. That is a, ta a major task on, on, on itself. Um, and then I'm dealing with a lot of the um, primarily the testing sites, but I'm also now getting involved in the uh, vaccination sites with the health department. So there's a lot going on with emergency management in this town. Um, it's integrated in a lot of the different activities that are going on. I just wanted to bring that to your attention and let you know where we are and where we need to go. Any questions? Diane, you have to unmute. I don't have a question, Pete, thank you, but I do have a comment, Jim. Um, as someone who lost power for three weeks during the pandemic. We can't hear all you're saying, Diane, lean in. Sorry, I'll lean in. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> as someone who was out of power for three weeks in, uh, what was it, August, September, horrible. I ran out of right. propane. No one could make it down into my area. I was ready to shoot myself. I was on my job. Um, I, this is really well needed, and especially after seeing what's happening in Texas and all of the horrors that are going on there, I, I this is a proactive mood and move, and I think it's very smart. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara. Yes, uh, James. Uh, one of the considerations you said was that the wherever you choose for this will have to have a generator. Do you have places under consideration right now that you can share? Like it must limit where you can where you can do this. Again, there are options and opportunities to look into this. Um, we could potentially set up in the max and leave everything in in a room associated with this. Um, the um, ambulance senior corps. Center. What was that? Senior center also has a generator. The senior center has a generator. Uh, there are several schools that have generators. I've taken a look at a couple of EOCs at other locations, and they've been in and or around schools because generally, when you operate an EOC, schools are not in session. Um, you know, we like you said during ICAS when everybody was out of power for those days. Um, you know, we were trying to run an operations center out of the public works department who was going completely crazy with trying to get the roads open and waiting for Eversource to, to reconnect things. Um, so I think we need to look at separating those two activities outside of one another. And I think this yeah. is a proactive approach to that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, Jim, you want to move over to the uh, LPC? Yes. Mike, if you could bring up my LEPC. Thank you. I don't really want to read through all of this, but I think it's time uh, that you understand that a lo the local emergency planning committee, again, is a smaller budget but I think it needs to be pointed out what they do. Um, they're in response by the State Emergency Response Commission that we have a local emergency planning committee. Their primary use, and you're welcome to read all this through as you go through it because you have it, but their primary use is dealing with emergency facilities um, and hazardous materials. Um, that's where it was originally formed. So such, things like Kimberly Clark, Chemical, chemical marketing, Home Depot, or any of these other hardware stores, et cetera, that all have uh, chemicals and things like that. They also all have to file tier two reports with the town of New Milford. Um, and that's with through the emergency planning side of it. Um, but we look at coordinating our plans with these facilities, with the state and federal emergency plans in case something goes wrong. We also in the town of New Milford have a uh, hazardous um, materials trailer, um, which is the showers um, 
for uh, decontamination and things like that. We have that and was given, was given that by the state because we have a hospital. So in case something goes wrong, people are gonna come here to that hospital and it's a decon trailer for that particular use. Uh, the town of New Milford over the years has also uh, tapped into this other emergency response groups, such as the Community Emergency Response Team, which is CERT, which has been very active lately, and the Northville Amateur Radio Association, NARA. Uh, they are our backup in case we have significant problems with our radio systems, et cetera. Um, it's very important to have these type of the backup, even though it's Northville Amateur Radio Association, they are covering quite a bit or helping out quite a bit of region five, which is the Northwest corner. Um, they don't really look at boundaries. They look at the areas that their radios could help other people out. If our radio systems go down and they do on occasion go down, um, the radios, some of the radio towers in the uh, spring um, flat wind event that we had, it wasn't called a tornado, it was called the microburst. Um, we lost the tower down at the high school. Uh, Brookfield lost all their towers. So they were con concentrating on trying to, to do emergency response through amateur radio. So that again is very important. Next slide, please. All right. This particular line item has been part of the health department budget and part of the fire marshal's budget in the past, but I wanted to bring this up. This is really a standalone committee. It has its own meetings, has its own requirements. That's overseen by a town administrator. Um, as of November, you appointed me to uh, this committee. It looks like I'm going to be taking this over. Uh, they had their first meeting in the January of this year, uh, in over a year. Um, the LEPC did not meet during COVID-19 because most of the mem me these members really have other jobs that are in the emergency sector. So they were really focused on that. It's time to get back up and running with these. Next slide, please. Our total budget is currently $4,000. Our current amount utilized to date is 2,468. We will be utilizing almost all $4,000 of this because I have requests in for our next meeting. Um, I'm requesting that this budget be forwarded in the same as $4,000 with no increase in budget. Thank you. If you have any questions, that'd be greatly appreciated. Any questions for Jim? No, good job, Jim, and everything. Great job, Jim, thank you. Thank you. Next thank is- you. Thank you, Jim. Next is- Good evening, all. Thanks, Jim. Next is the police department. Chief Ceruto. Okay. Chief Ciro should be a panel should be a panelist. And start the video. And where's the share? Here. Hi, Chief. We're good. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Council, Board of Finance. Nice to see everyone this evening. Good evening, also, Chief. Special welcome, obviously, you mentioned to our uh, veterans and our citizens. Uh, very happy to be here tonight to present our budget and highlights of our police department budget. I'm here with uh, my command staff team tonight. It was a team effort in putting this budget together and also in managing our budget this year. We kept a close eye on the budget and uh, you'll see in our highlights, uh, there are some uh, areas where I think we've been very successful. Anyway, I want to uh, let you know I'm here with my team. Uh, we're all in this together, and we've worked uh, very hard, uh, not only preparing this, but uh, again, uh, watching the bu budget like uh, hawks this year. Uh, if we can go to our uh, screen and share our screen, Captain. Okay. Uh, can he enable the screen? Yep. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. So these are uh, some of the highlights of yep, our. We're, uh, we're not seeing any. Uh, Excuse me. Um, we don't see any presentations. Right. Mike Sinello. One at a time, everybody. <laughs> Mike Sinello, they they like want the to days. share their screen. Well, I made them a co-host, so they should have been able to share with panelists. If they'd uh, like me no. to do the sh screen sharing. Here we go. There you go. It's a little different than uh, the other version. Do you guys want to see what you got now, Chief? Can you see that now? Yep. Yes, sir. 
Steve. Great, excellent. These are uh, some of our budget highlights for the year. And I just want to uh, start by saying that our staff uh, has remained especially resilient this year. It's been a very difficult year with the challenges of uh, COVID. The officers and staff were very professional, very dedicated and stay focused on their uh, mission. So I wanna give them all credit for the hard work they've done this year under very difficult uh, circumstances. This year also brought about uh, many changes uh, and mandates through the uh, House Bill 6004, uh, uh, also known as the Accountability Act. Uh, some of the mandates uh, are listed here uh, for you to see. You could see that uh, mandates included body cameras and car cameras, uh, also behavioral health evaluations for our sworn officers, in addition to uh, urinalysis to, tech, uh, to test for drugs. Also additional training uh, was mandated uh, through this act. So you'll see uh, throughout our budget, uh, different areas that have uh, increased. For example, one of the big increases was our body cams and car camera uh, requirement. You'll see that we've uh, requested 205,000 to implement this system. And we feel that the system we've chosen is a high quality system. We believe we're providing uh, excellent uh, equipment uh, to our officers and staff with this uh, system. We've uh, also looked at other systems and we had a bid as high as over a half a million dollars uh, on a five year uh, contract. Uh, we uh, also have a CAD system. You can see in bullet number three, our CAD RMS system is Computer Aided Dispatch and Report Management System. It's an old system. It's uh, something that I recognized two years ago when I first uh, became the chief, that the system was old and would eventually be in need of uh, replacement. It is uh, 22 going on 23 years old. Uh, the system fails often, is uh, in need of constant uh, maintenance, and um, the uh, uh, system itself is at its end of life. So we're very excited at the opportunity, of course, if the funding's approved, uh, to move forward with a new CAD RMS system called NextGen. NextGen is a very forward-moving uh, 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 system. It is in place in 162 uh, towns across the uh, state. So we are one of the few towns currently without that system, and we're really looking forward uh, to uh, implementing it. It will help improve efficiencies uh, and officer safety uh, in the field. Um, so it's something that I would uh, say is a uh, need, not a want. In bullet number four, another one of our highlights uh, this year uh, was our uh, community care coordinator's uh, success. Not only is success in an individual capacity, but working together as part of our team here at the police department. As you can see in this bullet, he's been partnering with our officers and they have, and they have made a connection. The officers contact the community care coordinator to assist in cases uh, such as uh, homelessness, addiction, people who are suicidal, even joblessness and uh, such. Uh, our officers have become uh, aware and focused on helping people uh, find social services, and they do this through our uh, community care coordinator part. So I just want to say that that's been a very successful program. One of the areas that it has uh, been successful, as you'll see in the next uh, bullet, is that overdose deaths are down here in uh, Connecticut or in New Milford. In Connecticut, there's been a rise in deaths across the state. In 2020, Connecticut uh, overdose deaths rose 18%. These are numbers provided from the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner. But again, in uh, New Milford, we saw a decrease. Uh, two years ago, unfortunately, we had five deaths from opioid overdose. Last year, we had four. While that decrease is one, still a very important decrease because every life matters. Now here's some good news and some good news that I couldn't wait to tell you about is uh, our uh, dispatcher over timeline. Uh, we have uh, been working very closely with dispatchers and I want to thank the dispatchers for uh, the job that they do. I want to thank them for being so professional throughout the number of storms that we had this year. 
But I also want to thank the dispatch union for working with me and the administration to come up with a memorandum of understanding that allows us to uh, hire a per diem uh, dispatcher to fill in. Uh, that allowed us to uh, lessen the overtime burden. That's one of the drivers that helped us lessen that overtime burden. There are other uh, uh, reasons for that also. I want to say that their uh, level of uh, professionalism and their high level of motivation um, and morale is also a part of that. So as you can see, just for example, dispatch overtime in Febru February of 2020 was at 128.3%. Quite frankly, we were over budget on that line. If you see this year, February 2021, we are currently at 57.4%. That means we're actually below budget in that line item. So I'm very excited about uh, that reduction, something that we've been uh, working on and watching very closely. And like I said, I thank the dispatchers for their help uh, in that area also. Police overtime is another area that we've uh, shown a reduction. In February 2020, at this point, we had 71.8% of our overtime budget expended. And currently this year, we have 59.8% expended. Again, below budget, and we're uh, happy to see that, especially in the difficult year that we have had. Next slide. Uh, I wanted to show you this slide because I want you to, to see the team that's been working so hard uh, to, to accomplish all of this. One point I want to make is that we are at full staff, um, and that's a position that we haven't been at in years. Uh, it's very good to uh, know that we uh, have a, a staff that is committed, a staff that we have been able to retain, and we even have... Um, uh, applicants who are very interested in coming to work here. Uh, nevertheless, this is our uh, team and uh, everybody in here, each and every one of them is a very important member of the team. We have 63 employees here at the police department and each and every one of them is an important part of, of what we do in our success. Our uh, organizational chart has uh, changed since I've uh, been chief. I've I've probably presented this to you three times and each time you've seen uh, changes. But I hope what you do see is that the organizational chart is becoming more balanced. There's equal supervision at uh, various uh, levels. And you can see that the uh, tasks are uh, distributed in a somewhat equal uh, manner. Now, I also want you to look at this organizational chart and see all that we at the police department offer in so far as services to our community. You can see that there are um, all different services offered in all different areas. And we've added some new uh, services uh, this year. We are going to be uh, implementing a uh, community policing officer uh, starting next month. And we're gonna be uh, housing them down at the uh, new substation uh, on Railroad Street. Uh, we also added uh, accreditation uh, and budget oversight, strategic projects, for example. Uh, I want us to start looking forward to the future and uh, improve uh, our vision for the future. Uh, and, and that's where those areas come into uh, play. For example, our strategic projects, maybe we'll look, not maybe, we've already started our five-year plan. So uh, hopefully by the next time we meet, uh, we will have a five-year plan to present, uh, to show our goals and vision. Uh, for the future. Nevertheless, um, this is our organizational chart. Uh, it's a dynamic chart. It changes as we change to uh, address the needs of our community. Uh, these are some interesting statistics. I just wanted to give you an idea of the work that uh, the staff here uh, does year in and year out. Uh, this year, I'm very uh, happy to, to report, as you'll see at the bottom of the screen, uh, that we have uh, shown a decrease in crime over the last year. Now, this is a third quarter report, but I've looked at the fourth quarter and I see about the same number coming through. Uh, these are uh, statistics from the state of Connecticut and we're waiting for the, the final uh, quarter to come through yet. But nevertheless, a 21% decrease is uh, something to be uh, proud of. Other towns across the state have shown uh, smaller decreases and many have shown increases. 
So I, uh, again, credit the uh, staff for that work. The men and women of the uh, New Milford Police Department have been vigilant. Uh, we have been uh, focused in reducing and uh, bringing criminals to justice. Uh, if you'll notice, our officers are very visible. Uh, hopefully when you drive up and down our uh, main roads, you'll see officers parked in areas where they can just be visible. And uh, that type of omnipresence uh, helps uh, deter uh, criminal activity. Nevertheless, you'll see uh, our case numbers in general uh, went down this year by a, a couple thousand. There was a time uh, early on in COVID where things were just uh, shut down and uh, people were sheltered. And uh, I, I lend uh, that uh, to the cause there. Criminal mischiefs are, are down. Uh, larcenies are down 246 in 2019, 216 in uh, 2020. Motor vehicle stops are down for about the, the same reason. Uh, COVID and early on through March, April, May, June, and, and July, officers were you know, still in the midst of figuring out uh, COVID and uh, we were uh, limiting our exposure to COVID. Um, but nevertheless, um, interestingly enough, motor vehicle accidents are also down and I'm glad to see that. Uh, last year, motor vehicle accidents were down 10%. This year, it looks like motor vehicle accidents are down even more than that. Domestic violence. Domestic violence is uh, somewhat constant. Uh, I was concerned about our domestic violence numbers this year, you know, with COVID and people being uh, shut in um, and together more often, for example. Uh, other parts of the uh, state and country have shown an increase in domestic violence, and I was happy to see a decrease. Drug overdoses, uh, 43 in 2019. We had 35 in 2020. That equates to almost a 20% reduction. I was very pleased to, to see that because in that reduction, we also see a reduction in the number of fatalities. If we can reduce the number of overdoses, period, we can reduce the number of fatalities also. So we're staying focused on that. Uh, we're not taking the foot or our foot off the gas on that one. I also want to acknowledge that this is a, not only a team effort, but a community effort. Um, the police department and the community care uh, coordinator, but also all of our social services, our uh, opioid task force, um, all of our uh, citizens who have been uh, helping uh, with this uh, problem uh, have all been successful. It's a, it's a community effort dealing with this for sure. Um, and our last statistic here is medical assists uh, are, are down. Our officers are all uh, medically trained uh, and our officers do respond to, uh, as you can see, uh, many medical calls. Okay. Okay, so uh, the last slide I'd like to, to show, can you get the last slide up there? Sorry about that. Stop okay, well, the last slide I uh, wanted to show was just a slide with some photos of our community policing efforts. As you know, community policing has always been um, a focus of mine. Focus of mine. Can, can you see this screen? No, uh, Mike, you, they need the share again. Okay. Uh, well, that's okay. I'll just continue without the screen. As I said, it's just a series of photos. And uh, some of the highlights this year, as far as uh, community policing, was uh, spending time at the senior center, senior center, spending time with our children down at the uh, children's uh, center, um, and also just our officers in general feeling comfortable enough to stop by uh, at different locations. For example, a picture of a lemonade stand where officers stop by to visit uh, a, a young girl selling lemonade. Um, Early on in COVID, we had a uh, poster contest. That poster contest was uh, New Milford Strong, and we got dozens and dozens of inputs uh, from that. And it was nice to see uh, the, the community reacting with the police department to uh, you know, uh, work on a major community problem. Uh, our canines are uh, in the schools and in the parks and uh, give demonstrations. Uh, our helicopter is available for uh, demonstrations at school. For example, we were at the middle school um, in the fall and we were uh, there to uh, talk about science. 
Talk about aerodynamics and lift and such. The helicopter landed at Baldwin Park and over 300 children from the middle school came out to, to talk uh, with their science teachers about things uh, related to the, the helicopter. Um, last year in our budget presentation, I made you some promises. I promised uh, a cadet program and we came through. We started our cadet program in the fall and I'm very happy to report that we have 25 uh, cadets signed up for our program. We're uh, moving forward and looking forward to working with the community, for example, on community projects uh, coming up in the spring. Uh, the, the cadet program is going to be something that not only benefits our youth uh, insofar as leadership skills, but also our community insofar as the services and the projects that uh, our cadets will work on. Uh, another uh, promise I made was to open uh, the substation. The police substation on Railroad Street is ready to be opened, and we have a, a grand opening plan for March 27th. It's a Saturday. We're going to have it at noon. That's March 27th, and I want to make sure I invite all of you to attend. Uh, we're going to have uh, people down there to discuss uh, community policing. We're going to have our community policing officer who's going to be assigned to the downtown district there. Uh, we're also going to have our uh, cadets there. We're going to have our motorcycle there and, and such. Um, we want to show off uh, the, the facility. And I want to thank our facilities department for all they did for us in uh, getting that, uh, you know, up and running. They uh, redid the floors for us. They did electrical work in there. They moved furniture. Uh, the facilities department uh, was great to us. And I wanted to thank them uh, for their help. So the community policing focus has been very successful and we look forward to uh, continuing that uh, throughout this next uh, year. Uh, one idea that I have that I wanna get to when uh, COVID is uh, gone is a uh, Citizen Police Academy. I know I've mentioned it to you in the past, but it's something that's uh, very important to me and I think will be uh, helpful uh, to uh, opening up channels of communication with the uh, community. And that's one thing we need to continue to work on, opening up channels of communication. And, and that's just one way I uh, plan on doing it. Uh, that brings to an end my presentation. Uh, once again, uh, I just wanted to uh, thank all of you. Uh, thank our, our citizens uh, for your support. Our budget is our plan. Our budget is our plan and how we do all that I just mentioned to you. And uh, as I said, I appreciate your support in, in all that we do. And if anybody has any questions, uh, we'd be happy to answer them. Katie? Oh, thank you very much, Chief. Um, and thanks to your command staff, patrolmen, sergeants, everybody. Um, um, it's wonderful that we have crime down and the community care officer, Justin, um, can't say enough about what he's done. Great impact, it's visual. People notice right away that the green is just looking better. and. Yes, so you've you. done a great job and I'm very happy to hear the cadet programs coming back. Uh, your parking enforcement officer, I do my best to continue to keep her salary. <laughs> <laughs> she and, does an excellent job. <laughs> and I think you've done a very thorough job here of showing us what you need to do the job that of course our residents uh, wanna have done to be protected and taken care of as you've been doing. So uh, I just say thank you to all of you and. And I will say what I've said to you when you first came here is that I just want to remind all the guys that are out there, smile when people drive by. We all know you're tough and you can take care of us, but every once in a while, crack a smile for us so we know you're, uh, you're uh, okay. It's good advice. <laughs> Thank you. Chris? Uh, Chief, great presentation. Thank you. I just have a couple budget questions, actually one budget question. So, um, the bigger increases are for patrolmen and sergeants. Is that a function of where you mentioned earlier in your presentation that uh, we're finally fully staffed where we haven't been in a few times? Is that? Yes, that is, uh, that's certainly part of it. Uh, no doubt about it. The other part is contractual raises, but uh, both of those are drivers in that. Yep. And the only comment I'll make is I know it's been um, for a lot of different reasons an extraordinarily tough year. Uh, for the PD, and I just can't say how proud I am of, of that whole department, the job you all are doing, and whether it's the community care coordinator, which I know is is more than just one person, but certainly 
Uh, yes. Justin has had a huge impact. Um, sure. It's been remarkable and the community policing is, is really, um, uh, has, has done a great job and I know you're gonna do more for it. And, and you know, the, to me, the number one priority of a municipal government is to keep its citizens safe and you, you all are just doing a phenomenal job. So thank you. Thank you very much. Dave? Yeah, I, I just wanted to get back to the increases. Um, several hundred thousand dollars uh, from last year. Mm. The increase. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. Oh, what do you want me to comment on, on that in general? No, no, I just want to make sure I had the, num the increase correct. That's, oh. that's all I'm saying. So it's about three, four hundred thousand. Yes, it is. Okay. And most of that, from what I understand, is due to my favorite unfunded mandates. Uh, I would say the most of it is this, the increase is due to our contract, but a big part yeah. of it is these. Uh, no, well, I didn't, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yes. The major part of, if not all of your increase, is due to contractual obligations as well as unfunded mandates. Yes, that's correct. Yes, I've heard that. I, I, I'm very familiar with unfunded mandates and contractual obligations. And uh, one thing you did bring to mind, uh, Councilman, is uh, we do expect a 30% reimbursement from the state on these body cameras and in-car cameras. And I'll highlight that word we expect. So let's uh, hope that yeah, that well, comes through. We're, we're expecting a lot in yes. educational funding, <laughs> a whole variety of small cities grants, yes. but uh, we'll, we'll see. Unfortunately, their budget comes after ours. Yes. Well, thank you very much for everything. Thank you, sir. Walter? Yeah, just a quick question, Chief. First of all, yes. thank you for everything and the whole uh, department there. For those of us that are not familiar with your, um, an acronym, the CMD, I think, RD, the, the CAD. What yes. does all that stand for and what's the use of it? The uh, CAD is Computer Aided Dispatch. And uh, that is the system the dispatchers use. So when a call comes in, that's the system they use to um, enter information from the call. And it's the system they, they use to uh, dispatch uh, vehicles to the call. And uh, the RMS is a records management system. That's the system that all our officers use to file reports. For example, when we arrest somebody, they use the RMS to file an arrest report, but they also use it to file every other uh, report that goes along with a, an arrest. So there might be a statement that was taken with an arrest. There would uh, be a rights form that was uh, processed uh, with an arrest. So it compiles all of our uh, records into uh, one system. Um, and uh, it's used by officers and dispatchers. CAD is dispatch, RMS is officers. Okay, thank you, Chief, that's all. You're welcome, sir. Amy? Hi, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I also had a question about the unf unfunded mandates of which I understand there are many. Um, yes. Curious to know, do you um, anticipate there may be an opportunity to seek some grant funding to help defray some of the cost um, or to partner with um, Tammy Reardon, the grant specialist and compliance expert for the town? Yes, that's an excellent question and an excellent idea. Uh, we will be working to uh, get a uh, grant reimbursement on our body cameras and in-car cameras. Uh, so that is one that we were uh, looking at. And we're hoping there are some other grants available to this state. We haven't seen them, but this uh, whole uh, process is new to us all. Uh, that doesn't mean that we won't look for it. Uh, we uh, have uh, someone now who uh, works with uh, Tammy and she's been very helpful to us in searching for grants. So I will definitely reach out to her to see if we can get some uh, reimbursement on some of these mandates. Okay, it's great that that's on your radar. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Trevor, I know you had your hand raised. Did you have a, a question or comment? Uh, just a quick comment. Um, just want to say thank you to the chief and the department of guys. I kind of look over the train station from my office and I see how busy everybody is down there where Justin's been doing downtown uh, just collectively. Just want to say thank you 
Chief, you've been a breath of fresh air since you've been Thank here. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, this, this, uh, um, the overtime with the dispatchers has been a five-year reoccurring uh, message for us. So yes, uh, I saw you fall off your chair, Trevor. Yeah, <laughs> I, <did. laughs> I, I, I have a, I have a personal uh, relationship with the uh, dispatchers here in town with the oh, okay. situation yes. that happened. So it was very great for us to see that. Thank you. Agreed. Diane? Thank you, Pete. Uh, Chief, I also wanted to just thank you. I've seen a remarkable change in downtown and Justin is a rock star for helping our homeless population and those in need. Um, so I just wanted to recognize him and say that his work is yes. very noticeable and really uh, needed. I also wanted, uh, you know, the, the photo in your montage here of the helicopter reminded me of um, when it uh, dropped down at JPCC and then also at the uh, Young Field event. And I, I live near the, uh, Candlewood Lake and almost a daily occurrence is it would go over to uh, Lynn Deming Park. So keeping us all safe, very, very uh, thoughtful and very, very welcome. Yes. And also, yeah, also the community outpost on railroad station great idea. Um, it makes you so welcome and people not, you know, afraid to go to a police officer if they are afraid or in need or just, just you know, want to talk about this or that. I love it. It makes you so welcoming. And I just wanted to thank you for all of that. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate it. Uh, we uh, have worked uh, very closely uh, with Justin to reduce the number of homeless. When I started here, we had 12 uh, homeless and we would see them all over and it was a sad situation. And we've been able to place all 12 of those and we've uh, helped turn their lives around. So thank you for recognizing that. And I appreciate the kind words to our department. Thank you all. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Chief Ceruta? Uh, yeah, Chief, can I get the names of the people that are with you in the room there? Yes, I'm very proud to, to introduce my team, Captain Wilcoxon, Lieutenant Grabner, Lieutenant Wheeler, we good? Yep, go ahead. And uh, my Executive Secretary, Christine Gautreau. Can you spell that last name, Christine? <laughs> Tell me if I get it right, Christine, G-A-U-T-R-A-U. Thank you. You got it. They did a great job uh, helping with this budget prep preparation, and I'm very proud of the work they do. And Chief, uh, again, we want to thank you um, from the Council and the Board of Finance uh, to all the men and women of the Milford Police Department for everything you do, whether it be a regular event, a special storm event, uh, COVID. Uh, we can't thank you enough for keeping us safe. So please tell the men and women thank you from us. Thank you very much, and thank you for your support. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. So next, uh, Mike, we have uh, the opportunity for the public to comment again before we recess. Okay. We so, so Mike. what I'm going to what I'm going to ask, uh, if you guys don't mind, is I'm going to have uh, the, I'm going to lower some hands over on the panelists so that we can get attendees to raise their hand if they'd like to participate in public comment. That should be a one button click at this point. Um, at the bottom of your screen, there should be an icon that says raise hand and it should look like a raised hand. Uh, let me turn on my video so I can, so it's going to look like a raised hand. Um, so we'll open the floor for that for just a moment here. And then uh, Pete, when you're ready, we'll start letting people in. Joe, I have you up first. Okay. Go ahead, Mike. You want me, you want me to just bring in Joe right now? Yep. All right. Let's see, I'm gonna allow Joe to talk and then ask to unmute. There you go, Joe. Good evening, everyone, can you hear me? Yep. Great, thank you. Uh, so I have three different things I wanted to talk about. First off, and I hope uh, Chief Ceruto is still on the line. I wanna mimic what everybody on the council and the board of finance has said with him doing an exceptional job and point out uh, just a couple of things that I thought were super, uh, I participated in a statewide emergency management meeting uh, about a week and a half ago, and it was recognized that statewide uh, drug overdoses are up 29% statewide. 
and the chief uh, along with his staff and uh, of course Justin Comer have somehow lowered the town of New Milford's drug overdose 20% and I think that's a heck of an accomplishment. <clears throat> um, I'd also like to point out for the police department in, uh, in their favor that in uh, 2019, the police department was $3 excess. We had $3 excess. That's amazing work. So mimicking everything that you guys have said, uh, you know, having $3 of excess is, is very responsible. You know, uh, taking into consideration 2019 and 2020, the average for those two years is uh, in excess of $23,000. Those are really good numbers. So good work, Chief, to, to you and to all your staff. The second thing I wanted to, uh, to mention is that I'm highly in favor of an emergency operations center. I think that's a must, something that we, we need to do uh, with a population of 27,500 people. Uh, the time's come that we have to provide that resource for our first responders and our emergency staff. So I, I totally support Jim Ferrillo and his assistant, Kevin Reynolds, in that endeavor. Lastly, and I believe this falls under uh, human resources, there's a line item in the budget that says benefits and general insurance. So I broke out the last six years of that uh, line item. And so maybe we'll just talk about the last three years. In, in 2018, there was an excess in that budget of $283,568 in 2019, $719. Thousand seven hundred and twenty-eight dollars, and in 2020, an excess of five hundred ten seven five five, with an average for that three years of six hundred and fifteen thousand two hundred and forty-two dollars. That's a tremendous amount of fat. So I wanted to ask this um, this panel if they could take a look at benefits and general insurance. Uh, to see why that's so robust and if we can kind of tighten that up a little bit. Thank you. Uh, Joe, can I get your home address, please? 87 Boardman Road. Thank you. Is that your home address? I, I think that's his business address. He's muted now, so. He's muted now. Please make sure we get home addresses not just business addresses. Thank you. We have anyone else, uh, Mike, that's looking to uh, do public participation? Uh, no, um, if you wouldn't mind, I could just give 30 seconds on tonight's technical difficulties. We, we are addressing these as we speak. Um, for as far as the phone-ins are concerned, we're not sure exactly what happened. I've been on the phone with the IT department all night um, and we are meeting tomorrow morning at eight o'clock to address the call-in problems. Um, I've tested the Zoom link on four other devices here that have never used Zoom or my email accounts. They seem to be working. So the link should be working, well, as of at least half an hour ago. Um, and we'll be addressing the <coughs> first thing tomorrow morning with the IT department. Um, we're not also, sure what's going on with closed captions either. Uh, Dave and I have been, again, on the phone tonight about all of that, and we'll be dealing with that tomorrow morning. And also, Mike, these, these, rec these uh, meetings are recorded. So we'll make sure they'll be on our town link so that people that do want to see them will have the ability to do so as well. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. That was my question. That where will where will people be able to see? They're going to be housed on the town of New Milford's uh, YouTube page. Right. Uh, and also, I'll make sure that they will be housed on our web page as well. Great. Thank you. And then uh, for the town council, I'd like to entertain a motion to. Um, uh, what is our motion that we're doing? Recess. Over recess. recess. I, I move that we recess till tomorrow night at seven o'clock. So moved. And we have a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? And Walter for Board the Board of Finance to recess until to February twenty fifth at seven p.m. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye. Good night.